Shalom, brothers and sisters. Most high in Christ bless you all. Happy Sabbath. It is empty in here. Damn. Heard a lot of brothers got hit by the uh, COVID. And then um, you have other people experiencing symptoms. Uh, after the bishop's class, before everybody departs, let's make sure we anoint everybody. All right? We'll make sure we do that. Okay? Uh, today we're going to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we do every Sabbath. But today we're going to exalt him more. Um, of course, it's going to be interactive. So I'm going to call on a few brothers. Okay, what is the purpose of Christ? And I want thorough answers. I don't want one word answers. I want you to elaborate. What is the purpose of Jesus Christ? Say your name once you stand up. You could just exalt your, your voice unless uh, Jonathan can get you the mic fast enough. Soldier Judah Yashar. Soldier who? Judah Yashar. All right. Yes, sir. Um, the purpose of Jesus Christ was to give repentance unto the children of Israel simply because we could not uphold the old sacrificial law. Mm -hmm. So he had to be the perfect sacrifice. Through him, all things are justified as long as we repent. Okay. Give me another brother. Give me a Ezekiel. What is the purpose of Jesus Christ? Uh, the purpose of Christ was to uh, reconcile our relationship with the Father through his blood because, like the soldier said, we uh, even though we was doing animal sacrifice, that wasn't the purpose of animal sacrifice, was to make us perfect, and that, that didn't do it. So Christ came to show us a perfect life so that we could follow his example so that we can come back to the Most High. Okay, Officer Yurakamel? Uh, to bring together the northern and southern kingdom again, and to uh, establish the kingdom. Okay, those are all good. What else? What other purpose did he play? Zephaniah, Officer Zephaniah. Uh, to be an example to the nation, to show us how to walk um, uprightly in the law, statutes, and commandments. What uh, were some of his um, titles? What positions did he play? Uh, he was... Or should I say, what roles, what roles, notice I said roles with an S, is he going to play when he comes back? Uh, he's going to be the, he's going to be the, he's going to be, he is God. He's going to be the God over the, over the world. Uh, he's going to be uh, the Isaiah. Baruch, soldier read, Baruch. Huh? Okay, just write this down, brothers. Prophet, priest, and king. Prophet, priest, and king. All right, Jesus Christ accomplished all three. Prophet, priest, and king. Today we're going to concentrate on the priest part. Okay, let's open up with Hosea 3, verse 4. All right, Officer um, Shanav. Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. For the children of Israel mm -hmm. shall abide many days mm -hmm. without a king. So the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. Come on. And without a prince. And without a prince. Come on. And without a sacrifice. And without a sacrifice. Go ahead. And without an image. And without an image. Go ahead. And without an ephod. And without an ephod. Somebody explain why. Officer Karim. Why was the children of Israel going to abide many days without these things that we just read? Shalom, Cap. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because we had lost identity, and because we came into captivity. Okay. One, because we lost, of our, lost our identity as a result of going into captivity. Okay? We, we didn't have a king, because we don't have a king over us. All right? These presidents who act as kings, those are not of our lineage, and our true king is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Okay? Read that again. For the children of Israel shall mm -hmm. abide many days without a king. Many days without a king. Many days without a king. Come on. And without a prince. And without a prince. Come on. And without a sacrifice. And without a sacrifice. Why? Why without a sacrifice? Give me some examples. Officer Zephaniah. Give me some examples. Why many days without a sacrifice? Because we was no longer under the uh, sacrificial law. Because the temple was destroyed. Because the temple AD. was destroyed. What what um what time period was it's, the temple destroyed? In seventy A.D. That's it. That's the only time period. Uh no, 
um, when you go back into the history of Babylon, they destroyed the temple first. With Babylon evil. too, under Nebuchadnezzar. All right, the heathens always look to defile and destroy our temple. So now the Bible is saying we shall abide many days without a without, without a king, a prince, without a sacrifice. And if you're without a sacrifice, what are you without? Huh? What else? Starts with the letter P. Priest. If you're without a sacrifice, you're without a priest. Read that one more time, officer. For the children of Israel shall, ab shall abide many days without a king mm -hmm. and without a prince mm -hmm. and without a sacrifice. Come on. And without an image. And without an image. Our image was destroyed. That's why all throughout the earth now, what do you see? See white images of Jesus, white images of God, et cetera, et cetera. Right? It's self-explanatory. All you got to do is just turn on the TV or look at your local church or just pick up a magazine. OK, it's not our image, the one true image of God that's being exalted on the earth as far as God being black. Right. They have him as white. OK, so we are without an image and our self-identity on a on a deeper level. Our self-identity is thoroughly destroyed. The black man is always at the bottom. So is his self-esteem. All right. Go ahead. And without an ephod and without a what ephod and without an ephod. Now, what, what can you um, replace that word with Ezekiel? I just said it without an ephod. What can you replace that word right there with? All right. I need you brothers to be thinkers, cerebral thinkers. Don't get nervous because I call on you. Just think if you're writing good notes, you should be able to think. All right. This is not Sunday school. So I want you brothers to think. Be very cerebral with your thinking. That lets me know that you're processing the information and just, you're just not sitting there staring at me. Uh, I can't think of a, a word to replace Yes, ephod. you can. Ephod. What's an ephod? ephod? You're staring at one right here in front of the table. Uh, right. Uh, that's what we got right there. If y'all don't know, right down there, that's the ephod. All right. Who wore the ephod? Oh, without the priest. Without the priest. All right. You can replace that word with priest because it was the high priest, the high priest that wore the ephod, the ephod, not all of the priests, only the high priest. And who were the high priests? The sons of Levi. I'm yeah, the sons of uh, Aaron. The sons of Aaron were the high priest. Okay, very good. Go ahead. And without a teraphim. And without a what? Teraphim. Teraphim. What is that? Officer Elior, what is a teraphim? What is a teraphim? The teraphim. Shalom. The teraphim was the... Um, the head where did they had to the the place the to place the um to place the law the little mm, book of the law no oh no that is tefillim that's called tefillim or phylacteries for the lack of better words right um what is a teraphim officer Karim Uh, teraphim is like a small, like a small, like uh, statue or like sculpture or something like that. Very good. There's a definition right there, and there's a small illustration of it as well. Because for those of you who did not know what a teraphim is, let's read that. Teraphim, noun, sm small images or cult objects used as domestic deities or oracles by ancient Semitic peoples. Now, if you scroll over to the right. All right, so that's some example right there. Those little illustrations, basically, you would have little teraphims of perhaps the angels and so forth. All right, these little small objects that represented what we believed in. Okay, y'all understand? Give me Hosea five fifteen. This is to further expound on the abide many days without. Abide many days without. Okay, like Officer Karim and Officer Zephaniah said. The temple was destroyed. We went into captivity. That's why we didn't have all these things. Go ahead. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place. When did God go and return to his place, brothers? Brothers, when did God go and return to his place? Slavery. Go ahead. Till they acknowledge their offense. Dispensation of time. God says till or until they acknowledge their offense. That's what we're doing now. That's why you have the resurrection of the Israelites. We're starting to wake up and acknowledge our offense. 
Go ahead. And seek my face. And what? And seek my face. How do we seek God's face? Officer Zephaniah. How do we seek God's face? Um, by reading the scriptures, Isaiah 34 and 16. Very good. Perfect. That's how we seek God's face because his words is found in the Holy Bible. No other place, not the Quran, not all these other books that they have on the earth, but the Holy Bible. That's why God says they shall seek my face. Go ahead. In their affliction. When we catch in hell, in captivity, and all the way up until now, because this is still captivity. Brothers, do not ever forget. We are in Babylon the Great. This is still captivity, all those, although the yokes of iron are off, are off of our necks. We are still suffering as a people. You see the calamities. All you got to do is turn on the TV. You see what's going on with our people as a nation. Go ahead. In their affliction, mm -hmm. they will seek me early. So what is God telling you about the so-called Negro right here, uh, Soldier Baruch? What is God telling us about the so-called Negro? And the so-called Hispanic and Native man. But that they he says, up. in their affliction, they shall seek me early. What is God telling you? Affliction. What is God saying? Uh, when we're going through our trials, that we will seek them, that we will be, uh, be searching for them, looking for them. In Why? Uh, uh, to get our minds right. Why? Why does he have to put us through the affliction? Oh, because we some um, we some stiff-headed people. We don't very good, listen. very good, very good. All right, because we are stiff-headed, hard-headed, stiff-necked people. The only way we gonna listen, God got to put us through something. We never acknowledge God until all hell breaks loose. Then you have those who don't even acknowledge Him when all hell breaks loose. Right. They acknowledge themselves or they acknowledge other people. God says, you know what? I know these people. I created them, right? I'm the, the creator of all creations on this earth. Here you have the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and natives. They're hard-headed as hell. They're only going to listen and repent once I stick my foot up there behind. Mm. And that's what you see now with COVID-19. That's what you see now with the black-on-black -black crime, right? That's what you see now with the other nations coming up against, you know, the Israelites. Cops putting black men to death. It's all a result of us, what? Not obeying God's laws. Therefore, his judgments are upon us. But that's the only way he's going to get us to wake up. Y'all understand? Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Give me 1 Kings 8.46. So there's a reason for this. There is a divine purpose behind the ass whooping. And the word ass is in the Bible. All right? So sisters, don't fret. Brothers, don't fret. <laughs> all right? The word ass is in the Bible. So there is a, a reason, or should I say a method to this, what we think is madness. Right. There's a reason why the Most High is doing what he's doing. First Kings 8 and verse 46. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Mm -hmm. If they sin against thee, mm -hmm. for there is no man that sinneth not, mm -hmm. and, that, and thou be angry with them. Was God angry with us? Absolutely. That's why I said he would. Go and return to his place. Very good. See how you're able to put the precepts together? That's why I need y'all to think. Go ahead. And deliver them to the enemy. And deliver them to the enemies. Go ahead. So that they carried them away captive. So they carried us away captives. Come on. Unto the land of the enemy. Uh-huh. Far or near. Far or near to Jerusalem. Go ahead. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Where did we just read this? Where can we find the yet? If they shall bethink themselves, Officer Elio, we just read it. Let's see if you can make the connection. In Hosea. What part of Hosea? 15, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we got to bethink ourselves until we start seeking his what, face. What, what word, what phrase in Hosea is talking about the same thing where it says bethink in 1 Kings 8? That's seeking his face. Seeking his face. Very good. Read that again. Yet if they shall bethink themselves mm -hmm. in the land where they were carried captives and repent. That's what this whole thing is about. And repent. And repent. And the reason we have the capability to repent is because of whom? Christ. Right? The prophet, priest, and king. It's because of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. 
and repent mm -hmm. and make supplication unto thee Come on. in the land of them that carried them captives, mm -hmm. saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. That's the thing about our people. We got to be honest. We're not honest. We are not an honest people. We'll make what? Excuses. We'll make excuses for our sins. We'll make excuses for everything. That's just how the so-called black man is. Stiff-necked, hard-headed, rebellious, and we make excuses. But God says he wants us to repent and do what? We Saying mm -hmm. we have sinned. He wants us to confess our sins. He wants us to confess our sins. God wants us to be honest. Self-examination. A thorough self-examination. Right? Let's get Hebrews now. Now let's get into the topic. Hebrews chapter 5 and I want you to get uh, let's start at verse let me get it sometimes I don't be reading along let me get it let me get it one second Hebrews chapter 5 and I want you to start at verse 1 Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 1 for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men. Why is it ordained for men? Officer Zephaniah. Because the sons of Aaron that were the high priest, they made the atonements through the, uh, sac through the sacrifice for the uh, nation of Israel. Okay, good. Go ahead. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Jump to verse uh, 4. Verse 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, mm -hmm. but he that is called of God, mm -hmm. as was Aaron. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. All right? That's why the word Levi means joint unto me. Okay. But out of the lineage of Aaron, those are the ones that stood before men and God to offer up sacrifices. You had to come from the lineage of Aaron. Go ahead. Verse five. Mm -hmm. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, mm -hmm. but he that said unto him, thou art my son. Mm -hmm. Today have I begotten thee. So it was the most high God that ordained Christ to be our high priest. That's why Jesus Christ went through what he went through. On the behalf of the children of Israel. Go ahead. As he saith, also in another place, mm -hmm. thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So it says, as he saith, also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Hmm. After the order of Melchizedek. Was Melchizedek a, um, a Levite? Officer Karim. Nah, I'm out. Uh, he was not a Levite, but uh, we still, our forefathers still sacrificed to him, though. Okay, and what was Melchizedek? Um, he was a son of God. And can you click? Can you? What was Melchizedek? Question? If people were sacrificing, oh, he was him. a priest. He was a priest. All right, let's let's get that real quick. Uh, I think it's in Genesis 14, right? Let's find it because I didn't write it down. If somebody finds it, call it. All right, let's get, let's read it. Genesis chapter 14 and verse 17. Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his... Start at verse, start at verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, mm -hmm. brought forth bread and wine. So Melchizedek was also a king, all right? And this is the same title that Christ possesses, a king. Go ahead. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he was a priest of the Most High God. Go ahead. And he blessed him mm -hmm. and said, Blessed be Abram mm -hmm. of the Most High God, mm -hmm. possessor of heaven and earth. So how do we know Melchizedek was not from the tribe of Levi? Ezekiel. Because this was um, before Levi was born himself. Because this was before Levi was born himself. However, this man was a king 
and a priest. Now go back to what you were holding in Hebrews chapter 5, and we want verse 6. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. As he saith also in another place, mm -hmm. thou art a priest forever mm -hmm. after the order of Melchizedek. So this is making reference to whom? Jesus Christ. This is making reference to whom? Who's after the order of Melchizedek. Why? To be a priest and a king. And Christ was also a prophet. That's why I said, what roles did he play? Prophet, priest, and king. Melchizedek was a what? Priest and king. But he was not of the um, Aaronic, or the sons of Aaron, I should say, lineage. He came way before that. He was way before that. Okay? Now get me Genesis. Genesis chapter 49. Let's read the prophecy on Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 49 and... I think it's verse uh, 12, right? Uh, verse, no, verse 10. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter, the scepter means kingship. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Come on. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. What's between his feet? What's between your feet, man? Your rod, right? Your balls. That's what it's talking about. Okay, meaning this lawgiver was going to come out of the tribe of what? But I thought that the lawgivers were from where? Levi. So what happened? Say it again on the mic. This is going into the prophecy of uh, what we read in Hebrews 5 about the, uh, he being born, being after the order of Melchizedek. He being born after the order of Melchizedek. Levi, the tribe of Levi, having the role of the high priest, that was a temporary thing. That was a foreshadowing of what? Foreshadowing of things to come under Christ. So that's Christ took over that priesthood, all right? And we're going we're gonna to go into it a little bit more. We're going to be more thorough in our explanation. Okay, so Aaron performed sacrifices for all Israel. So does Christ die for so did Christ die for all Israel. Get me Sirach 45. We're gonna read 6 through 22. This is the book of Sirach and the Apocrypha. We're gonna read 6 through 22. Sirach 45. The book of Sirach, mm -hmm. chapter 45, verse 6. Mm -hmm. He exalted Aaron, and holy man like unto him, mm -hmm. even his brother of the tribe of Levi. Come on. An everlasting covenant he made with him, and gave him the priesthood among the people. Mm -hmm. He beautified him with comely ornaments, mm -hmm. and clothed him with a robe of glory. So Aaron and his sons, those who became high priests after him, they didn't have on no bum garments. That's all we have to take what? We have to take... Um, into great consideration how we look. That's what it's in, um, what is it, in Isaiah? When it said, put on that beautiful garments. All right, brothers can't be walking around with uh, uh, shirts not ironed, holes in their garment, not brushing your teeth, uncombed hair, smelling like body odor. Nah, we are the priests of the Most High, so you got to carry yourselves as such. Go ahead. Verse 8, mm -hmm. he put upon him perfect glory mm -hmm. and strengthened him with you, rich. You see what the Most High just said? He put upon him perfect glory. Bad garments. Bad to the bone. Go ahead. And strengthened him with rich garments, mm. with breeches, with a long robe, and the ephod. With the ephod. ephod. Now, the breeches is talking about pants. So, no, the Israelites was in war, running around with skirts. All right. A lot of times. When you're at camp and you're teaching, a lot of, especially with the sisters, they like to say that, like on the street. Well, y'all got on dresses. No, these are garments, and we have pants on under it. Okay, go ahead. And he compassed him with pomegranates. Those were at the bottom, right? Go ahead. And with many golden bells round about. So when the high priest would walk into the temple, the bells would ring. Go ahead. That as he went there might be a sound mm -hmm. and a noise made that might be heard in the temple mm -hmm. for a memorial to the children of his people. Read. With an holy garment, with gold and blue silk and purple, mm -hmm. the work of the embroiderer, embroiderer with a breastplate of judgment and with the Urim and th Thummim. Go ahead. With twisted scarlet, 
the work of the cunning workmen mm -hmm. with precious stones graven like seals. As we're reading this, try to put it in your mind. Visualize what's going on. Put that imagery in your mind, that perfect glory, how Aaron was, was clothed. This is God that gave him this dress code. He didn't make this up. So just think about it. Just envision that thing, how God decked him out. Go ahead. And set in gold the work of the jeweler mm. with a writing engraved for a memorial mm -hmm. after the number of the tribes of Israel. Go ahead. He set a crown of gold upon the mitri, mm -hmm. wherein was engraved holiness, mm -hmm. an ornament of honor, mm -hmm. a costly work. Come on. The, the desires of the eyes, mm -hmm. goodly and beautiful. Go ahead. Be, before him there was there were none such, mm -hmm. neither did ever any stranger put them on. Read. But only his children and his children's children perpetually. Go ahead. Their sacrifices shall be wholly consumed every day, twice continually. And we're going to go into that a little bit later. Keep that. Mark that down. Verse 14 says, their sacrifices shall be wholly consumed. The word holy means in its entirety. Their sacrifices shall be wholly consumed every day, twice continually. There's a reason why I'm emphasizing that. Write it down so you're not confused later. Go ahead. Moses consecrated him mm -hmm. and anointed him with holy oil. Come on. This was appointed unto him by an everlasting covenant. Go ahead. And to his seed, so long as the heavens should remain, that they should minister unto him and execute the office of the priesthood mm -hmm. and bless the people in his name. Come on. He chose him out of all men living to offer sacrifices to the Lord, mm -hmm. incense, and a sweet savior mm. for a memorial to make reconciliation for his people. Mark that down. Sweet savior. Sweet savior. Highlight that part. I'm emphasizing this for a reason. Sweet savior. Go ahead. He gave unto him his commandments and authority in the statutes of judgment. Come on. That he should teach Jacob and the testimonies, and inform Israel in his law. And as you know, the tribe of Levi failed. That's why they're the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, hence becoming the base of all nations in the Western Hemisphere. Hades at the bottom, for those of you who don't know. Lord willing, life lasts. The, um, we're going to touch on the tribe of Levi in the next class. Okay, go ahead. Strangers conspired together against him mm -hmm. and... Maligned. maligned him in the wilderness. Come on. Even the men that were of Dathan uh -huh. and Abaron's side. So these were the wicked men that conspired against Moses. That was murmuring, gossiping, like we have in the nation of Israel today. Those same spirits are back here. No new thing under the sun. Go ahead. And the congregation of Korah mm -hmm. with fury and wrath. Come on. This the Lord saw, and it displeased him. Mm -hmm. And in his wrathful indignation were they consumed. Come on. He did wonders upon them to consume them with the fiery flame. Read on. But he made Aaron more honorable mm -hmm. and gave him an heritage mm -hmm. and divided unto him the first fruits of the increase. Especially he prepared bread in abundance. And especially he prepared what? Bread in abundance. Highlight that. Bread in abundance. Highlight that. Bread in abundance. I'm emphasizing that because we're going to go into that a little later. Go ahead. For they eat of the sacrifices of the Lord, mm -hmm. which he gave unto him and his seed. Go ahead. Howbeit in the land of the people he had no inheritance. Mm -hmm. Neither Why didn't they have no inheritance? Officer Karim. Uh, they were set up on the outskirts of the different cities so they can go and uh, do the sacrifices and stuff like that. Okay, good. Go ahead. Neither had he any portion among the people, mm -hmm. for the Lord himself is his portion. So their job was to serve in the, in the temple. That was the job of Levi. That's why there was no allotment of land given to them. Go ahead. And inheritance. That's it right there. This, that's uh, verse 22, right? Yes, sir. Give me Exodus 12. I hope you guys highlighted those parts and you guys are not falling asleep. Hopefully I'm not boring y'all to death. Exodus 12, um, verse 15. Exodus 12, verse 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Even the first day ye, sh ye shall put away. Now this is, this is going into the Passover, but there's a point that I want to bring out. Go ahead. 
Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. Mm -hmm. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, mm -hmm. that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Okay, that's not what I wanted. I'm sorry. Get verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Your lamb shall be without blemish, mm -hmm. a male of the first year. Your what? A male of the first year. Read before that. There's something that I wanted. It your says, Mm -hmm. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Your lamb should be without blemish. Your lamb should be without blemish. Come on. A male of the first year. Mm -hmm. Ye shall take it out from the sheep and from or from the goats. Okay, stop right there. Now let's go to the New Testament. All right, you brothers are following along and not lost, right? All right, let's go to the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 29. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him mm -hmm. and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, mm -hmm. which take away the sin of the world. So what was Christ referred to as what? The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, which does what? Which taketh away the sins of the world. What world? The world of Israel. Very good. And we all should know that precept by now. Okay. Um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 24. Mm -hmm. For in the long garment was the whole world. So which garment was this making reference to? Uh, don't call out. Don't call out. Soldier Baruch. Which, which garment? Read that again for him. For in the long garment mm -hmm. was the whole world. Which garment is this making reference to? It says in the long garment was the whole world. Christ. No. Christ, right? No. Nope. Try again. Another chance. Israel. Who had the garment? It says the long garment. Who wore the garment? Uh, pass it to the brother in front of you. Stand up, say your name. Shalom, Kappa, Soldier Naraya. Naraya. Uh, the long garment is going into the priest. What priest? The Levitical priest. They wore the long garment. What Levitical priest? Uh, Aaron and his sons. What were they called? Um, there's a word that you're leaving out. And I want to make sure you guys understand because there's different priests. There's two different categories of priests. It's talking about the high priest. The high priest. Write that down, Neriah. And Baruch. Write that down. Okay, read it again. For in the long garment was the whole world, mm -hmm. and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the fathers. So the whole world was represented in the four rows of stone. What is that four rows of stone? Yerachamel. Officer Yerachamel. What is that four rows of stone? Four rows of stones, uh, the ephod. Why you you sound like you're asking a question, like you're not uh, sure. Be the ephod, sir. Like the ephod, which is a representation of what? The twelve tribes. The twelve tribes of Israel. So that's the whole world. That is the whole world. The whole world is talking about the Israelites. That's it. Yeah, go ahead. Take the mic. What scripture was that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon? We're in 18, verse 24. Yes, sir. Wisdom of Solomon, 18, verse 24. Read it again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 24. Mm -hmm. For in the long garment was the whole world, mm -hmm. and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the Father's graven, mm -hmm. and thy majesty upon the diadem of his head. And the diadem of his head was a small jewel that could be found around the Mitri area. Okay, go back to John 1, verse 29. So now when John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. What world is it making reference to, brothers? Israel. Read it again. This is something that the Christian church cannot and refuses to understand, whether it be by willful stupidity, right, or just sincere ignorance. They just dumb as hell. They dumb as a, it's, it's just horrible. Worse than crack. You can't, like Deacon Yawasab says, you can't fathom that thing. It's just unbelievable. It's like a phenomenon how stupid our people are just stuck on Christianity. Okay, go ahead. 
John chapter 1, verse 29. Mm -hmm. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him mm -hmm. and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. All right. That's making reference to Jesus Christ, who died for the nation of Israel. Now, this Lamb, this Christ, was without what? Sin. Was without blemish. Just like it was recorded in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 5, where the high priest had to offer up what? A lamb with no blemish. It's representation of Christ. That's how Christ said what? Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. This whole Bible is about Jesus Christ. So you can't understand how do you have certain sects of Israelites today who reject Jesus Christ. Right. And they'll say, oh, JC, we don't believe in that JC. So they have no mediator between them and the father at all. And it's just utter stupidity because Jesus Christ is referred to throughout the whole Bible. The whole Bible. Okay? Get me wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 4, 11 through 14. Come on. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 11. Mm hmm Yea, speedily was he taken away, mm -hmm. lest that wickedness should alter his understanding, mm -hmm. or deceit beguile his soul. That's why he died at an early age. The Most High took him up, okay? 33 years, and then crucified for the nation of Israel. Go ahead. For the bewitching of naughtiness uh -huh. doth obscure things that are honest. For the what? Bewitching of naughtiness mm -hmm. doth obscure things that are honest. What's honest, brothers? The laws. God is saying for the bewitching of naughtiness does obscure things that are honest. We can get corrupted. This flesh is weak. Y'all understand? Go ahead. And the wandering of concupiscence mm -hmm. doth undermine the simple mind. And the wandering of concupiscence doth does what? Undermine the simple mind. Because our people are simple as hell in their simplicity. Go ahead. He being made perfect mm -hmm. in a short time. He being made perfect. In a short time. Come on. Fulfilled a long time. No blemish. No blemish. In a short time. The 33 years. Guess what? That 33 years, that took up a long time. Even though it was just 33 years, he was able to accomplish that in just 33 years that some people can't accomplish in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Within 200, 300, 100 years, Christ accomplished so many things. That's why I, uh, I believe it's in the book of Matthews or John. I might be, um, I'm not sure what book it is, but I know it's there. It says that. All the things that Christ did, there's no space for it to write. He did so many things, huh? Where is that? Okay. No, we don't. We don't. I just wanted to quote it. Okay. Read what you got. All right. So that's in John 21. Y'all can read it later. Go ahead. He being made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time. Come on. For his soul pleased the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore hasted he to take him away from among the wicked. That's how Christ was without blemish. Okay. Christ was taken away speedily from this wicked world. All right. It was fulfilled. His mission was accomplished. That's where he went up to what? Ascend unto the Father and sit at the right hand of the Father. Okay. Let's go to Hebrews 9, chapter 22. Right, so Christ our Lord and Savior performed the office of a priest by offering himself up once, one time, one time. And I'm saying that for a reason. A lot of people think Christ is going to come back and die again. That's why it would behoove you, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives, to keep the commandments now. Christ ain't getting on that cross again. Christ is not getting on that cross. All right, so he offered up himself once. As a sacrifice to accomplish God's divine plan, okay, and to reconcile us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives, back to God, making Christ our mediator, right, who makes a continual what? Continual advocacy, a continual intercession between us and the Most High. All right, let's read Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Mm -hmm. And without shedding of blood is no remission. There is no remission without the shedding of blood. Certain things, brothers and sisters, you cannot repent of. That adultery, that idolatry, which everybody in this room committed, guess what? We even should we should even be here. Our bodies should be in the ground. If we was alive during the time of Moses, we all would be dead. This room would be empty. There would be no Dallas IUIC. There will be no IUIC, period. A lot of us, we was what? 
and adultery, idolatry, fornication, breaking the Sabbath. Right. We was all guilty of all of that. But because of the mercy of Christ was we're here now and we got to get it. We got to make sure we get it right. Go ahead. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. It was Read it from the top again. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood mm -hmm. and without shedding of blood is no remission. Mm -hmm. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens mm -hmm. should be purified with these. Mm -hmm. But the heavenly things themselves. What were the patterns of things? In the heavens should be purified with these. What were the patterns of things in heaven? Officer Zephaniah. Uh, the patterns of things was animal sacrifice. Officer Kasha. It says, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. The patterns of things going into the uh, the tabernacle in the uh, temple. That the tabernacle, the temple. What else? Um, the the holy the holy vessels. The holy the, vessels, the holy the of holies. Ark. All of that is in heaven. Right. Remember, the bishop brought that out. All right? The things that you've seen in the temple, guess what? All of that is in the heavens. The cherubim, where is that? That can be found in the heavens as well. All right? Dwelling dwelling amongst God. Go ahead. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, Go ahead. but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Come on. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. What is the, there's your answer right there. Christ didn't go into the holy, holy the holies of holies into the temple made with hands mimicked after what God has in heaven because God is the one that gave the instruction to the to the tribe of Levi to build those things on earth as it is in heaven. Y'all understand? Go ahead. Which are the figures of the true, but which are the figures of the true heavenly ordinances. Go ahead. But into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. So what appeared in the presence of God for us? One word. Christ. Go ahead. Verse 25. Nor yet that he should be, excuse me, he should offer himself often as the high. Nor yet that he should offer himself often. Why did it say that? We read it early and I told you to highlight it. If you were listening and you were trying to be more cerebral instead of being distracted, you should know the answer. Huh? Why does it say nor yet that he should offer himself often? Officer Kasha. Because the uh, sacrifices that we did were wholly consumed twice continually. They were consumed twice continually. Okay, and they were offered year round, every month, every day, every week. Christ only died once. He offered up himself one time. Go ahead. Nor yet that he should offer himself often mm -hmm. as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. Go ahead. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Come on. But now once in the end of the world. Because when Jesus Christ came on the scene, I want you, let's make a distinction right there. It says, for then must he have, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Then it says, but now once in the end of the world. Somebody explain that to me. Officer Jethro. I mean, Milkama. I, I called him Jethro. Damn. Milkama. Verse 26 says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world. Somebody give me the sense of that. What is that talking about? What is the, what is the first part? We want to make a clear distinction between the foundation of the world and and then the second part where it says the end of the world. What is that talking about? What is the foundation of the world? Let's deal with that. The foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. um, I believe he's talking about the foundation of the world's Israel. No. Yes and no. Mm. Somebody help him. Soldier. Soldier Judah, you said, right? Go ahead.
when he mentions in verse 26 the foundation of the word, I believe he um, he's talking about the actual physical earth that he'd had to continue to basically die since the beginning of time based off of sins. And it says, but now in the end of the world. Concentrate on part. You said since the, the beginning of sin, right? Yes, sir. Explain that. Um, basically, since the children of Israel was given the laws. Okay. Before that, too. Because Christ was what? Christ was there since the foundation of the world. Yes, sir. Christ yes, sir. is the one who made the world. Yes, sir. So when he died, he died for what? Karim. Of the Karim. It's telling you that uh, Christ has always been there when we was in sand. There, even from the time of Mount Chesedek, um, in the time of Moses and the burning bush, all that Christ is always there when we was in our sand. Uh, Christ there. was always um, there. That was the purpose. Now give the distinction where it says, but now once in the end of the world. What is that talking about? Same brother, soldier Judah. Going into when he showed up on the scene that initiated the last days. Very good. What scripture would you use to prove that? Officer Mokama. He just said when Christ showed up on the scene, that was the last day. What is the proof? I don't have an answer for that one right now. Anybody could help him? Ezekiel? I want a scripture that says just that. Do you have it? Yes, sir. What is it? Hebrews 1 and 2. Go ahead, read it. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. Hath in these last days mm -hmm. spoken unto us by his son, mm -hmm. whom he hath appointed heir of all things, uh -huh. by whom also he made the worlds. Come on. You see, who, it said in, in these last days, in these last days. The last days is also considered what? The end of days. So go back to Hebrews chapter 9 and read verse 26 again. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. Mm -hmm. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now get me Lamentations chapter 2, verse 13. So it was extremely imperative that Jesus Christ died for us. Like I said, we would not be here if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Get me Lamentations 2, verse 13. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. What thing shall I take witness for thee? Mm -hmm. What thing shall I liken to thee, O mm -hmm. daughter of Jerusalem? So what thing shall the Most High liken unto us, O daughter of Jerusalem? Come on. What shall I equal to thee, mm -hmm. that I may comfort thee, mm -hmm. O virgin daughter of Zion? Come on. For thy breach is great like the sea. For thy breach. What's a breach? Officer Zephaniah, what's a breach? It says, for thy breach is great like the sea. It's, it's a, like a break or a gap. A break or a gap. Very good. Read that, that last part where it says the breach. For thy breach is great like the sea. Mm -hmm. Who can heal thee? Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. So go back now. So Jesus, like the high priest of old, stand before us and the Most High. Therefore, what? Closing what? That breach, that gap, that breach. Very good. Go to um, Hebrews chapter 7 now. I want 722 to he 28. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22. Mm -hmm. By so much was Jesus made a sh surety of a better testament, mm -hmm. and they truly were many priests. Now, why does it say Jesus was made a surety of a better testament? After the order of Melchizedek, right? Why does it say that? Soldier Judah. Because under the law of Moses, a lot of our, um, our, our people would basically, they will basically get prepared to go commit a sin. And they already had a sacrifice ready for them. So it didn't basically, the laws wasn't on their mind. Didn't the law them. did not make us perfect. Right. Okay, the law of sacrifice I'm talking about. The law of sacrifice did not make us perfect. Some of us would offer jacked up animals to the Most High. Some of us didn't care, would sin and offer it up again. It never made us perfect. But Christ, what it says in verse, uh, where were you? Verse 22. It says, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Because of that grace, that hope in Christ, we could get it right, get ourselves right. And the things that caused us death under Moses 
now we can we have that grace period, that mercy, that time frame to get it right. That's why it's a better covenant, a better promise. Okay? And the glories and the covenants and all of that, all those good, glorious things that come along with it. Immortality and everything. Y'all understand? Go ahead. Verse 23, and they truly were many priests mm -hmm. because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. What is that? Officer Kasha. Why does it, it says, uh, and they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. These men, they were mortal men like all of us, so they had to die eventually due to old age. Thus resulting in what? A change of the high priest. A change of the high priest. Good. Good. I want you brothers to practice being more thorough in your explanation. You want to give a, a who, what, where, and why behind all your answers. Okay, go ahead. But this man, because he continueth ever, mm -hmm. hath an unchangeable priesthood. Mm -hmm. Wherefore. But this man, you got to emphasize that thing. Come on, get into it. But this man, that's why man is written in what? Italics, right? You have to emphasize that thing. But this man, what man? Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, okay? But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. So, I'm say, hey, I'm from the tribe of Levi. Guess what? All hail Judah. Hey, I might be Judah, to tell you the truth. I might be Judah. Hey, as long as I'm Israel, I don't care if I'm Naphtali. As long as I make it, you know, all praises to the most high, if it's the most high's will. Um, it says, but this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. So ain't nobody taking the priesthood away from Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Why does it says for wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth? To make intercession for them. What is the part where it says to the uttermost? What does that make in reference to Officer Zephaniah? Think, think, brothers. It says Christ is able to save them to the uttermost. What other what uttermost? What is that going into? Basically saying we got we can under Christ we can repent under all we can repent from all our all sins. That it's we more can. than that. That's good. That's good. You're on the right track, but there's more. You're gonna elaborate? That we couldn't. Uh, I'm talking to you. You got oh, the mic. Okay, so we could repent under Christ from the things we couldn't repent from uh, under Moses. What else? All the way. Um, Think about the word to the uttermost. Think about what Paul is saying. Oh, to the end of to the end of days, to the end of time. More, more, more. Come on, officer. You was cooking with fire, man. Come on. The uttermost, even into the Israelites that are scattered to the even uttermost. Even to the Israelites the that are scattered the to the uttermost part of the world. You forgot about Northern Kingdom? You forgot about Ephraim, Issachar? That was already on this side of the world when Christ was walking on the earth? You forgot about those in um, Ethiopia? Those coming out of where? Um, uh, Galatia? What we read about Acts, the second chapter? You think everybody was in Jerusalem? Come on, our mindset cannot be so small where we think the Israelites did not travel. Right. That's that white supremacy taking over where they tell you, oh, we was all just up in Africa, hanging, chilling in some trees with bones in our noses. Nah, we had ships. We traveled. Bishop, um, Bishop, Deacon Aitan is going over it now. OK, in his series, he's going into Northern Kingdom with how King Solomon with the fleets and the ships. And it was over here, the Moors and this. And we was everywhere. Right. We dominated everything. Christ said, even those. Because they what? They went into idolatry. They ended up going into idolatry. They were still on the opposite side of that breach. But Christ closed that thing for those to the uttermost part. Go ahead. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost mm -hmm. that come unto God by him. Come on. Seeing he ever liveth come on. to make intercession for them. Okay, go ahead. For such an high priest became us. Mm -hmm. Who is holy, mm -hmm. harmless, mm -hmm. undefiled, mm -hmm. separate from sinners, mm -hmm. and made higher than the heavens. One word. One word. No blemish. Without sin. Go ahead. Who needeth not daily. You, who needeth not what? Daily. We read that word earlier. We had to what? Sacrifice daily. 
Christ didn't have to do that. He did it once, and that's it. He was the ultimate sacrifice, thus fulfilling everything that was written in the Bible about him. Go ahead. As those high priests mm -hmm. to offer up sacrifice, mm -hmm. first for his own sins mm -hmm. and then for the people. So when the priests walked into the temple, they made sacrifices on their own behalf because they weren't free from sin. There was mortal men. They made sacrifices for themselves first and then for the children of Israel. Go ahead. For this he did once. Mm -hmm. When he offered up himself. Come on. For the law maketh men high priests, mm -hmm. which have. For the law maketh men high priests, meaning the, the, uh, the law that was talking about the children of Levi from the seed of Aaron that had to become high priests. Everyone in their lot. Go ahead. Which have infirmity. Mm -hmm. but, which have infirmity. Come on. But the word of the oath, mm -hmm. which was since the law, uh -huh. maketh the son uh -huh. who is consecrated forevermore. Where it says, but the word of the oath, meaning it was already spoken from beginning that Christ would take over the, the priesthood and offer up himself as a sacrifice. That's what we read where? Genesis in the beginning. Right. Genesis 49 verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Okay, Christ accomplished all of that. All right, let's move on. Okay. Okay. Get me. Um, so although Christ went up to the heavens, Jesus Christ still communicates with us, even though he's not here. How does he do that? We read it earlier. I'll give you a hint. It's in Hosea chapter 5, 15 and Isaiah 34, verse 16. How does Christ communicate with us now? Through the what? Through the Bible. Give me John 14, verse 26. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. whom the Father will send in my name, mm -hmm. he shall teach you all things mm -hmm. and bring all things to your remembrance. Be bring all things to our remembrance. That's how we remember now who we are. We are the Israelites. We are the ones that went into captivity, thus fulfilling the prophecies of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 15 to 68. Okay, Christ taught us all things. He taught us about his image that we lost. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. We know how to read now. So we don't listen to Esau. We don't need Esau to teach us about our God. We can teach ourselves reading the scriptures and listening to our elders as they bring it out. Go ahead. Whatsoever I have said unto you, mm -hmm. peace I leave with you. That's it. Okay, now get me um, Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. Because the Most High used men as parallels, as similitudes, to explain what he wants to do within the nation of Israel. That's why he used Jesus Christ, right? The shadow of good things to come. He used the, um, the high priest and Jesus Christ. The high priest, the high priesthood, the sacrificial laws was what? A parallel of what was to come in the future. Jesus Christ taking over the, the new covenant in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ taking over the priesthood. Y'all understand? Okay, so I'm going to give you two examples of that in the Bible. Give me Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. Mm -hmm. I have also spoken by the prophets, mm -hmm. and I have multiplied visions. So God said he's spoken by the prophets, and there's many ways he did that. And he also said he multiplied visions. Go ahead. And used similitudes. And used what? Similitudes. And he used similitudes. Come on. By the ministry of the prophets. By the ministry of the prophets. Let's get an example. I'm only going to pick two for the sake of time. We want Ezekiel 24. Ezekiel 24, 15 through 27. That's Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 15 through 27. To further expound on Hosea 12, verse 10. God using men, God using men to speak through them, whether it's words or actions, putting, putting them through certain things to let Israel know what he wants to do his divine plan go ahead Ezekiel chapter 24 verse 15 go ahead also the word of the Lord came unto me saying mm -hmm. son of man behold I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes so he used Ezekiel he said son of man behold I'm gonna take away from you the desire of your eyes. And it's going to explain itself further as we go down go ahead the desire of thine eyes with a stroke mm. yet 
neither shalt thou mourn nor weep. So look, I'm going to take the desire of your eyes away from you with a stroke. Your heart is going to stop. Yes. Yes, you're going to die. And not only are you going to die, you're not going to mourn over the person who died, although she is very close to you. Go ahead. Neither shall thy tears run down. And I don't want to see you cry either. Go ahead. Forbear to cry. Uh -huh. Make no mourning for the dead. Don't mourn for the dead either, Ezekiel. Come on. Bind the tire up of thine head upon thee. That's Dimitri. Come on. And put on thy shoes upon thy feet. Come on. And cover not thy lips. Go ahead. And eat not the bread of men. Go ahead. So I speak, excuse me, so I spake unto the people in the morning. Uh-huh. And at evening, even with come on, come on, and at right, even right. my wife died. And at evening my wife died. Ezekiel's wife got put to death. The Most High did that for a purpose. Read. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. And he did in the morning as he was commanded. He didn't say, "Man, I ain't going out." You got brothers who make all sorts of excuses not to go to camp, not to come to the school, not to bring their wives to the school. Unbelievable. Ezekiel ain't make no excuse. The things written aforetime was written for our learning. Okay? Like, like the deacon and the bishop say, get your balls back. Look at the history of your forefathers. Don't make excuses for your spouse. Ezekiel said, well, pff, all right, she's dead. Nothing I could do. I can't cry. I got to do what the Lord said. He says, in the morning, I did what was commanded of me. Not in the morning, I made excuses. Mm. Go ahead. And the people said unto me, mm -hmm. Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us? So please elaborate. Tell us what are you talking about? What is the similitude? What is the understanding of this? What's going on? Tell us. Go ahead. That thou doest so. Mm -hmm. Then I answered them. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, uh -huh. the excellency of your strength. So Ezekiel's desire of his eye, which was, was his wife, was a similitude of the temple. The priests, the priest at that time desired the temple. OK, they would forget about God's laws, but they desired the temple. Go ahead. The desire of your eyes, the desire of your eyes. Come on. And that which your soul pitieth. Come on. And your souls and your daughters whom ye have left shall fall by the sword. Mm. So they was going to what? Get taken into captivity, destroyed under Babylon. Go ahead. And ye shall do as I have done. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not cover your lips, uh -huh. nor eat the bread of men. Go ahead. Your tire shall be upon your heads, uh -huh. and your shoes upon your feet. Uh -huh. Ye shall not mourn nor weep, mm -hmm. but ye shall pine away from your iniquities. Come on. And mourn one toward another. Go ahead. Thus Ezekiel is unto you as a sign. Uh -huh. According to all that he hath done shall ye do. Uh -huh. And when this cometh, Ye shall know that I am the Lord. When this coming, you shall know that I am the Lord. So that's an example of God using men as an example of what he's going to do to the nation of Israel. Let's get another one. Keep this in mind. Remember, we're going over Christ being our high priest. As, as you go on, you're going to be able to make the connections as to why I'm saying this. Hosea chapter 1, read 2 to 11. Hosea chapter 1. In verse two, mm -hmm. the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. Come on. And the Lord said on said to Hosea, mm -hmm. go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms. Take unto you a wife of whoredom or hoe. That deep ditch. Yeah, that's you. You're going to take her. You don't want her. I know you don't want her. She got a reputation on her. But yes, you're going to marry that whore. Yes, you are. Absolutely. Yes, you're going to do that. Why, though? Go ahead. And children of whoredoms, mm -hmm. for the land hath committed great whoredom. For the, the land has com committed great whoredoms. Why? Because remember, Hosea was a prophet to what kingdom? Northern kingdom. What were they known for? Idolatry. Idolatry. When you commit idolatry, you commit adultery to the Lord because we're married to the Lord. We're married to Christ. Y'all understand? Okay, so now he said, okay, since y'all want to do that, y'all want to commit adultery and idolatry, on me? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Hosea, I want you to go find one of them whores over there, and you're going to marry her. And you know, Hosea was like, what? She don't got no walls, no nothing. Damn. I got to marry her? Yes, you're going to marry her. <laughs> go ahead. Come on. For the land hath committed great whoredom, Come on. departing from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he went and took Gormer, mm -hmm. the daughter of Dib Diblamim. 
Come on. Which conceived and bare him a son. Which conceived and bare him a son. Now you had to have a child by this woman. Hmm. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto him, call his name Jezreel. Call his name Jezreel. Come on. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel mm -hmm. upon the house of Jehu. Come on. And will cause to seize the kingdom of, of the house of Israel. Read. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Read on. And she conceived again. Now he knocked her up again. Go ahead. And bear a daughter. Uh -huh. And God said unto him, call her name Lo Ruhama, uh -huh. for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. The word Lo right there means no. Go ahead. But I will utterly take them away. Mm -hmm. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. Mm, that's why Judah didn't go into captivity under whom? Assyria. Go ahead. And will save them by the Lord their God. Come on. And will not save them by bow. 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 Nor by sword. Uh -huh. Nor by battle. Uh -huh. By horses. Nor by horsemen. Come on. Now when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Mm -hmm. Then said God, call his name Loami. Loami. Go ahead. For, for ye are not my people. Uh huh. And I will not be your God. That's why what? Later on, thus fulfilling prophecy, northern kingdom was cut off. That's why we needed Christ later to what? Bring them back into the fold. Even though some of them were what? Scattered where? To the uttermost. Bringing them back, giving them a chance at repentance. Okay, so what did God do right here? He used Hosea and his kids as a sign. That's why he told them to name them this. Because their children, the names of the children was a representation of what God was going to do to Northern Kingdom. Okay, now let's bring it up to Jesus Christ. Let's bring it up to Christ. Okay, give me um, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, mm -hmm. and not the very image of the things. What is the good things to come, brothers? Christ under what? The new covenant. Go ahead. Can never with those sacrifices mm -hmm. which they offered year by year continually mm -hmm. make the comers there unto perfect. It would not make us perfect being the old covenant did not make us perfect. Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered mm -hmm. because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Mm -hmm. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again mm -hmm. made of sins every year. Come on. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, mm -hmm. he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Read on. But a body. The body of Christ, that lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Go ahead. Hast thou prepared me Come on. in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin? Thou hast had no pleasure. So the Most High never, oh, all of that was temporary. It was always about Jesus Christ. All of that was temporary. That's why I said, what? The shadow of things to come. Drop that. Give me Colossians 2, verse 17. Colossians chapter 2, verse 17. Colossians chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Which Start are, at verse 16. Verse 16. This is the Christians. The Christians love to run to this over here. Go ahead. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Don't judge in meat offerings. Come on. Or in drink. Drink offerings made by the priests. Go ahead. Or in respect of an holy the day. The offerings on the holy days made by the priests. Go ahead. Or of the new moon. Or even on the new moons we had to offer sacrifices by the priests. Come on. Or of the Sabbath days. Or on the Sabbath days we had to offer up sacrifices. Okay, Paul is telling Northern Kingdom and the and, um, Israelites, the Jews scattered, don't let people judge you in that because you don't have to do that anymore. Christ fulfilled that through the taking over, offering his body as the ultimate sacrifice. Go ahead. Which are a shadow of things to come. Come on. But the body is of Christ. But the body is of Christ. Now let's go to Leviticus. Keep in mind what is what the Most High put Ezekiel through and what he put Hosea through. OK, write this down. We're going to uh, Leviticus and I want I want chapter one and um, we're going to read uh, one through seven. 
Leviticus chapter 1, 1 through 7. R write this down, brothers. Leviticus chapter... Wait, write burnt offerings. Burnt offerings, okay, which are offered whole, the whole animal. So burnt whole offerings, okay? Write uh, uh, the sacrifice for trespasses. Okay. Uh, write sin offerings as well. Okay. Write grain offering. Grain offering. These can all be found throughout the book of Leviticus. All right. All right. Let's concentrate on those for now. Give me Leviticus chapter 1. Go ahead, read verse 1. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord called unto Moses mm -hmm. and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel mm -hmm. and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, mm -hmm. ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. Mm -hmm. If his offering be a burnt, off burnt sacrifice mm -hmm. of the herd, mm -hmm. let him offer a male Without blemish. Stop right there. Get me um, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, mm -hmm. and thou shalt call his name Jesus, mm -hmm. for he shall save his people mm -hmm. from their sins. So that was the purpose of Jesus Christ, save his people from their sins. All right. He was able to do that because he was without blemish himself. OK, go back to Leviticus one, verse three, Leviticus chapter one and verse three. Mm -hmm. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice mm -hmm. of the herd, mm -hmm. let him offer a male without blemish. Mm -hmm. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Give me first Peter's one and 19. We're still dealing with the no blemish. First Peter's one and 19. Come on. First Peter chapter one and verse 19. Mm -hmm. But with the precious blood of Christ mm -hmm. as of a lamb mm -hmm. without blemish and without spot. Now get me 22 to 23. So Christ was without blemish and without spot. Go ahead. Verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth mm -hmm. through the spirit unto unfringed unfeigned love mm -hmm. of the brethren. Mm -hmm. See that ye love one another mm -hmm. with a pure heart fervently, mm -hmm. being born again, mm -hmm. not of corruptible seed, mm -hmm. but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Is that verse 23? Yes, sir. Okay, give me 1 John 3, verse 5. 1 John 3, verse 5. Keep in mind, remember, Christ was a replacement of the sacrificial laws. The Most High used Christ as an example, as a, as a similitude of what was going on under the sacrificial law. Go ahead. First John chapter three and verse five. Mm -hmm. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins mm -hmm. and in him is no sin. So Christ had no sin. Now read the second part of Leviticus chapter one, verse three after the semicolon. He shall offer it of his own voluntary. He wit. shall offer it of his own voluntary, come on, will at the door. So this was what was going on during the time of the sacrificial laws, under the time of the high priests and the Levites, all right? We had to offer our stuff voluntary, okay? So those were like sheeps, cattle, and different stuff. And guess what? That was like money. That was like considered like money at that time. So here you are just willfully giving away your money. God wanted that to be voluntary. Now, did Jesus Christ do the same thing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Give me John chapter 10, verse 17 to 18. John chapter 10, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore doth my father love me, mm -hmm. because I lay down my life, mm -hmm. that I may take it again. Mm -hmm. No man taketh from me. So he said, no man taketh from me. We're going to prove that. Because some of you say, well, how did he die? If it said, if he said no man taketh from me, then how did he die? Obviously, somebody took his life. Go ahead. But I lay it down of myself. Mm -hmm. 
I have power to lay it down, mm -hmm. and I have power to take it again. Christ is telling you something heavy right there. He said, I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Come on. This commandment have I received of my Father. Mm -hmm. So why? Because Jesus Christ was sent here to do the will of his Father. Christ didn't come here to do his own will. Go ahead. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for this thing. What, what verse are you in? That was nine, this is 19. We okay, I just wanted 18 to 18. Now get me Matthew 26, 51 to 54. Let's expound on that. Where Christ said, I'm the one who laid my life down. Matthew 26, 51 to 54. Keep in mind, during the time of the sacrificial laws, we had to what? Offer what kind of sacrifice? It was a burnt sacrifice, but it was what? Voluntary. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, in verse 54. 51 to 54. 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand mm -hmm. and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priestess mm -hmm. and smote off his ear. Come on. Then said Jesus unto him, uh -huh. put up again thy sword into his place. Go ahead. For all they that take his sword shall perish with the sword. Come on. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father? Uh-huh. And he shall pre present presently, presently uh -huh. give me more than 12 legions of angels. So Christ was letting you know what kind of power he had. But Christ understood the mission. If he did that thing, he would not what? Offer up himself as a sacrifice. He understood the mission that he was on. But he said, no, nah, no, nah, put, put away the sword. Don't you think I got enough power to call the legions, the angels? He didn't, he, don't need, he didn't even need 12. He said legions of angels. He only needed one. A little baby angel, even though there ain't no baby angels. <laughs> All right? Christ only needed one to bring havoc. He had that power. He got power over Uriel, Micah L, Raphael. He had power over those. Go ahead. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? But if I do that, brothers, how then shall the, the scriptures be fulfilled? It wouldn't be fulfilled. So I'm going to voluntarily give my life up for the children of Israel. Go ahead. That thus it must be. That's it. Come on. In That's that, it? That yes, was sir. verse 54. Okay, give me more. Let's get, let's get some more. Give me John 18, 5 to 9. John 18, 5 to 9. John 18, 5 to 9. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 5. Mm -hmm. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto him, unto them, mm -hmm. I am he. Mm -hmm. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Come on. As soon, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, uh -huh. they went backward. What does that mean? As soon as he said, I am he, they fell back. Boom. Like, what the hell? Was that an earthquake? Y'all ever seen the Marvel comics where, like, people like Havoc, they'll speak and, like, sonic boom will come out of their mouth? Same thing with Christ. What? The voice of what? Many water. There was power behind that. Y'all got to think. Just like when y'all at camp, somebody walks by the Bigfoot, and y'all say something. They're like, damn. They move back a bit. They jump back a bit. Imagine Christ. Christ had that internal Bigfoot. The super Bigfoot, right, right, the damn right. sonic boom, street fighter, guile, Bigfoot. <laughs> right, right, right. He said when he spoke, they fell back. That is the power. That is letting you know Christ gave himself up voluntarily. Read that part again. I y'all gotta think. When you watch these, I told you, I told y'all brothers before and sisters, art imitates life. Life imitates art. All of these Marvel stuff that y'all be watching, they get that from the Bible. That's right. Come on. John chapter 18, verse 5. Mm -hmm. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. I am he. Mm -hmm. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Mm -hmm. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. They went backward and fell to the ground. He just showed them a little bit of power. Imagine a uh, flex. He even flex. He just did one of these like. He even go up and he just said, he just said like this. Imagine when he come back. Imagine the power Christ, the black Messiah is going to bring when he come back. Right. Power never seen on this planet Earth ever. OK, get me Luke chapter four, verse twenty nine to thirty. We're still going over the voluntarily thing. Voluntary. Go ahead. What verse can Luke read? chapter 4, verse 29 to 30. Come on. Luke chapter 4, verse 29. Come on. And rose up mm -hmm. and thrust him out of the city. Come on. And led him onto the brow of the hill whereon there, 
their city was built. Uh huh. So the brow of the hill, that was the um the tip of the hill. Come on. That they might cast him down headlong. They wanted to throw Christ down headlong from the hill. What did Christ do? But he passing through the midst of them. He what? Passing through the midst of them. No, he moved them and said, pardon. Passing through the midst of them. He passed through the midst of them. And y'all thought Nightcrawler was bad. <laughs> right. Right? He walked right through them. Come on. Went his way. Went his way. So they looking like, damn, what, what the? They, they couldn't find him. He was gone. He was gone. Flexing just a little bit of power. So you don't think he had the, enough power to, to say, nah, I'm not going along with this. I'm going to kill all of y'all. No, he understood the mission. Christ was what? Selfless. That's how we got to be. Christ cared about the nation of Israel. Christ understood that I must needs die for the nation of Israel, thus fulfilling the prophecies that was written aforetime. Because if I don't die for the nation of Israel, there would be no nation of Israel. You brothers would not be here. You sisters would not be here. I would not be over here with this mic running my big black mouth. We would all be dead. And guess what? Every single last one of us is worthy of death. Y'all understand that? Yes, Never get too big headed. All glory must go to the Father in Christ. All right? Um, okay. Let's get some more. Remember, keep in mind. Remember what God did with Ezekiel and Hosea. He's doing the same thing with Jesus Christ to show you that what? He took over the priesthood. So you had the voluntary offerings. Christ offered himself up voluntary. Okay, now let's go to uh, Leviticus chapter 1, verse 11. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar. Nor he shall kill what on the side of the altar? The sacrifice. Go ahead. On the side of the altar, northward. Where? What direction? Northward. Southward? Northward. Westward? Northward. Eastward? Northward. Northward on the side of the altar. Go ahead. Before the Lord. Before the Lord. Is that it? And the priest Aaron's sons mm -hmm. shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. Okay, get me Exodus 40 verse 22. Exodus chapter 40 verse 22. Come on. And he put... The table in the tent of the congregation mm -hmm. upon the side of the tabernacle northward. Northward. All right. The table, the table was where they offered the sacrifices northward in the temple behind the altar. Go ahead. Without the veil. Without the veil. Now get me Luke chapter 23. Verse 33. Luke chapter 23. Verse 33. Luke chapter 23, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And when they were come to the place, mm -hmm. which is called Calvary, mm -hmm. there they crucified him. So this Calvary is the same as Golgotha. The mountain of Golgotha that we read about is the same thing. They're interchangeable. Okay, go ahead. And the male factors. Read it again. And when they were come to the place, mm -hmm. which is called Calvary, mm -hmm. they... There they crucified him uh -huh. and the male factors. The male factors were whom? The other two, the other brothers that was crucified with him, the sinners, the transgressors, the transgressors. That's why I said in the book of Isaiah, he was numbered with the sinners. Go ahead. One on the right hand uh -huh. and the other on the left. Go ahead. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, mm -hmm. for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Okay, stop there. Get me... um. Matthew chapter 27. And keep in mind about that Calvary that we just read, right? I want Matthew 27, verse 33. Matthew chapter 27, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And when they were come unto a place called Go 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 Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, uh -huh. they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. Go ahead. And when he had tasted thereof, mm -hmm. he would not drink. Mm -hmm. And they crucified him and parted his garments, mm -hmm. casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, mm -hmm. and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Mm -hmm. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. So when you look it up, when you look up... um. Calvary and Golgotha is north of the temple. It's on the north side of the temple. 
Okay, thus fulfilling prophecy once again. Mm. Like I said, the Bible's the whole Bible is about Jesus Christ. Okay, thus fulfilling prophecy. When you look up Calvary and Golgotha, it's north of the temple in Jerusalem, north side of the temple in Jerusalem. Okay, where Christ was crucified on the cross. Okay, um, give me Hebrews chapter thirteen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11. Hmm? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For the bodies of those beasts Mm -hmm. whose blood is brought into the sanctuary Mm -hmm. by the high priest for Mm -hmm. sin Mm -hmm. are burned without the camp. Now, when it says it's burned without the camp, it's talking about outside of the temple, outside of the camp, northward. Go ahead. Wherefore, Jesus also. That Wherefore, he, Jesus, what? Also, uh-huh. that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, mm-hmm. suffered without the gate. Suffered what? Without the gate. That's why he was northward outside of the temple at Calvary. Okay, suffered outside of the gate. The same thing that the priest was doing. It's a similitude. Mm. It's a similitude. There's no denying it that Christ took over um, the, the sacrificial laws he pre- when he presented his body for Israel. There's no denying it. So if you don't believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ, you're in the wrong place. Wrong place. Go ahead. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp. Let us therefore go forth unto him without the camp. Where? To the Calvary. Okay, to Golgotha, northward of the temple. Go ahead. Bearing his reproach. Mm-hmm. Bearing his reproach. Is that it on verse 13? Yes, sir. Okay. Now get me Leviticus 1 and 5. We're going to keep jumping back and forth to Leviticus because I want you guys to see the comparison. Leviticus chapter one, verse five. Mm -hmm. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord Mm -hmm. and the priest Aaron's sons Mm -hmm. shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So now what are we talking about? The blood, the blood, the sprinkling of the blood. Give me first Peter's one and two. First Peter, chapter one and verse two, mm-hmm. elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the father, the elect is the Israelites. Go ahead. Through through sanctification of the spirit mm-hmm. unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now get me Hebrews 12 and 24. The blood of Christ saved in the blood of Christ. What is that going into? The same thing that we was doing during the time of the Levites. All right. The time of the high priest, I should say. Okay, when they had to sprinkle the blood, the same way they had to sprinkle the blood, Christ had to get his blood sprinkled for us. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Go ahead. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant Mm -hmm. and to the blood of sprinkling. The new covenant and the blood of what? Sprinkling. And the blood of sprinkling. Is that it? That speaketh better things than that of Abel. Better things of that of Abel. That God is letting you know something else there. Those that can receive it, receive it. Okay? Blood. There's life in the blood. There's life in the blood. Abel was slain. Mm-hmm. Right? Christ was slain. The saints' blood crieth unto me. When shall thy revenge me? Y'all put that together. Okay? Um... Get me uh, Deuteronomy. Okay, so just like we read in Leviticus with the burnt offering, the whole animal had to be off- offered, the whole body of the animal, of course, without the skin. Okay, the whole body had to be offering as a burnt offering. Deuteronomy 33, verse 10. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 10. Mm-hmm. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments mm-hmm. and Israel thy law. Go ahead. They shall put incense before thee and whole burnt sacrifices, sacrifice upon thine altar. So that's what we had to do as the children of Israel. Whole burnt sacrifices. Give me Isaiah 50 and 6. Isaiah 50 and verse 6. Come on. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 6. 6. I gave my back to the smiters. So Christ said he gave his back to the smiters. Come on. And my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. And they pulled off his beard. Go ahead. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. So they spit on him. They smacked him. They punched him. Everything in the book. Go ahead. 
for the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Is that on, that's verse six, right? Yeah, verse six. Okay, get me Isaiah 53. So right there in Isaiah 50, 50, verse 6, it talks about his back and his face. You think that's the only thing that suffered? His back? No. Remember, he got whipped on his back. His face got spit on, smacked, punched. There's more. Isaiah 53, read um, 1 through 12 real quick. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Who hath believed our report? Mm -hmm. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Mm -hmm. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant mm -hmm. and as a root out of a dry ground. Mm -hmm. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when, he, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. So Christ him. was not a handsome man. All right. Jump down to um, verse, verse 5. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. Died for our sins. Come on. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh -huh. The, chat, the chastisement. chastisement of our peace was upon him, uh -huh. and with his stripes we are healed. So he had stripes, right? Stripes all through his back and so forth. Get me John 18, verse 23. This is just to explain the whole thing with the whole burnt over. Christ offered up his whole body. His whole body was mutilated. It wasn't just his back and his face. The same way the priest had to offer up the animal whole, Christ offered up his body whole. Go ahead. You say verse 3. Verse 23. 23. John chapter 18, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? So they smite him. Give me John 19, verse 29. So how about, how about his tongue, which allowed him to speak? What did they do to his mouth? I'm talking about the inside of his mouth, because we know he got smacked on the outside. What happened to the inside? Go ahead. John chapter 19, verse 29. Because you know he had cuts. And bruises in his mouth. Gums was probably bleeding, missing tooth, split tongue. Go ahead. Now there was a now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, mm -hmm. and they filled a sponge with vinegar. You ever put salt and vinegar on an open cut? Christ suffered that thing. For who? For us. Go ahead. And put it upon hyssop mm -hmm. and put it and put it to his mouth. Mm -hmm. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said. It is finished. What's finished? What was finished at that point? Him dying for the nation of Israel. Him being the ultimate sacrifice. Give me Matthew 27, 29. So we got the body. We got the back. Right? We got the face. Now we even had the tongue. What else? What else? The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns. Even the crown of thorns on his, he on his head. Go ahead. They put it upon his head. They put it upon his head. All right. John 19, verse 34. John chapter 19, verse 34. Come on. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. So he even got speared in the sides, pierced on his hand and feet. Christ gave up his whole body as a burnt offering. Give me Exodus chapter 12, verse 46. Now, although he gave up his whole body, there was his bones were still intact. Okay, get me Exodus 12, verse 46. This is what was commanded to the Levites for the Passover. Exodus 12, verse 46. Read. Exodus chapter 12, verse 46. Come on. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth out of the flesh abroad out of the house. Come on. Neither shall, I, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. So the lamb, the bones, the bone of the lamb could not be broken. Okay, and remember Christ is what? The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Get me John 19, verse 36. John 19, verse 36. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 36. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. So the Roman soldiers had to come and the other transgressors, the other brothers that were being crucified, they had to break their legs. They didn't do that to Christ. Thus fulfilling what we just read in Exodus 12. Okay where the Lamb of God bones should not be broken. Okay, now the same way Christ presented his whole body as an offering, as a sacrifice, we got to do the same thing. All right, how many of y'all seen Bishop Class yesterday on um, New Year's Day? Remember what he brought out about Romans 12? Y'all read, y'all understood that part? No answer? Okay, that means y'all probably weren't paying attention. Okay, give me Romans 12 verse 1. We got to do the same thing, brothers. Our spirit and our bodies, we got to lay our lives down for Jesus Christ. Romans 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. 
-hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, mm -hmm. that ye present your bodies mm -hmm. a living sacrifice. Mm. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. The same way Christ did. Presented his whole body from the crown of his head all the way to the tip of his toes for us. Go ahead. Holy, acceptable unto God, uh -huh. which is your reasonable service. And it's our reasonable service. Why? Because Christ laid down his life for us. We owe him everything. Everything you could think about, we owe him. Give me Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, mm -hmm. let him deny himself. Deny yourself. Present your, yourself as a living sacrifice. Deny yourself. Come on. And take up his cross daily. And take up his cross what? Daily. Take up his cross what? Daily. Take up your cross daily. Daily. The same way those sacrifices were offered daily. Mm. You got to present, present yourself as a living sacrifice daily. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 31, not every once a year, once a month, daily. It's a fight daily. Paul told you that. Paul warned us. He told us daily. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Come on. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Mm -hmm. I die daily. Christ, um, Paul died daily. He mortified his members daily. He died daily. Why? Because he presented his body as a living sacrifice to a man that presented his physical body for us. Give me Acts 2 verse 46. So how do you do that? How do you die daily? How do you present yourselves daily as a living sacrifice? Acts chapter 2 verse 46. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 46. Come on. And they continuing daily uh -huh. with one accord uh -huh. in the temple. So and we got to continue daily with one accord. We all got to be on one mind. Ephesians 4 tells you that. Zephaniah 2 verse 1 tells you that. We all got to be on one mind, continuing daily. That's why I tell you, brothers, the importance of congregating, not making excuses. Congregate. Build yourself up with like-minded brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And they continuing daily uh -huh. with one accord uh -huh. in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. And breaking bread from house to house. Give me Acts 5, verse 42. Acts 5, verse 42. Come the book on. of Acts, chapter 5, verse 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Every day, daily, they ceased not to preach and teach Jesus Christ because they had that fire within them. They had that fire inside of them. Ephesians 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Come on. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is the reason why you got to do this daily, brothers, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You don't got to eat a mite out there or another nation or even your own brother and sisters who are still in the world forcing pork down your mouth, trying to get you to commit adultery with a gun to your head. But these are things that are what? Presented to us by what? By, by way of what? Read. But against principalities. Principalities. Go ahead. Against powers. Powers. Against the rulers of the darkness uh -huh. of this world. Go ahead. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. The media. That's what's a daily fight. It's not just TV. You got the radio. You got TV. You got advertisements. There's sin everywhere. That's why we got to present our bodies as a living sacrifice daily. We got to congregate, be like-minded daily. Give me 1 Corinthians 5 and 10. And there's no escaping it. There's sin everywhere. That's why Paul wrote this. 1 Corinthians 5 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world mm -hmm. or with the covetous mm -hmm. or extortioners. That's those that are without. Those that are without, the fornicators, the adulterers, the uh, for, the, um, the covetors, the, 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 the thieves, the liars. Go ahead. Or with the idolaters. Uh -huh. For then must ye needs go out of the, of the world. So then must you needs go out of the world. This is actually talking about the planet Earth. You can't escape an adulterer and fornicator everywhere. But if you put on the whole armor of God and you present yourself as a living sacrifice daily, like Paul did, like Christ did, which is the perfect um, epitome of an example, guess what? You'll be able to overcome those things. 
you'll be able to overcome those traps put forth by the workers of, of iniquity in dark places. You'll be able to overcome those things that you see daily. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Okay, so Jesus Christ was our sweet savior. Remember, we, I told y'all to write down that grain offering earlier? Okay, Leviticus 2, verse 1 to 2. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when any will offer a meat offering unto mm -hmm. the Lord, mm -hmm. his offering shall be of fine flour. Fine flour. Go ahead. And he shall pour oil upon it. And we shall pour oil upon it. So you had flour. A lot of flour was used to what? Make bread. Make bread. Make bread. A lot of times in the book of Leviticus, you read about what? Unleavened bread that the priests took part in and they ate in along with the children of Israel. John chapter 6, verse 51. Okay, John, and, they, and they burnt those things and became a sweet savor unto the Lord. John chapter 6, verse 51. Come the on. book of John chapter 6, verse 51. Mm -hmm. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. So Christ said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Go ahead. If any man eat of this bread, mm -hmm. he shall live forever. Now the stupid Pharisees and scribes, they thought he was talking about cannibalism, but he wasn't. He was talking about repenting and having faith in him. Ephesians chapter 5, 1 to 2. Come on. Ephesians chapter 5, 1 to 2. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, mm -hmm. and walk in love, uh -huh. as Christ also had loved, hath loved us. That's talking about the commandments. Go ahead. And hath given himself for us, and an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. For a sweet-smelling Savior. Just like those burnt offerings we read about in the Levitical um, covenant, that was a sweet savor unto the Most High. Christ presented himself as a sweet savor unto the Most High. Okay, which allows us, when you read 2 Corinthians 2, you can write it down. 2 Corinthians 2, chapter 14 to 15, which allows us to present ourselves as a sweet savor unto the Most High. When we do what? When we keep his, his commandments. Come on, y'all wake the hell up. Okay? So Christ was also our peace offering as well. Get me Leviticus 3, verse 1. Leviticus chapter 3 and verse 1. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering. So we had peace offerings as well. Okay? Now get me Ephesians chapter 2, 14 to 17. And Jonathan, let me get that article that I sent you. Ephesians chapter 2, 14 to 17. Come on. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For he is our peace, who he hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. The middle wall of partition between us is what? Officer Zephaniah. Come on, answer it quickly. It was the animal sacrifice. Okay, good. Go ahead. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, Huh? Even the law of commandments contained in the in ordinances mm -hmm. for to make in himself of twain one new man. Mm -hmm. So making peace. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Read on. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body Come on. by the cross, uh -huh. having slain the enmity thereby. Go ahead. And came and preached peace to you, which were afar off uh -huh. and to them that were nigh. How were they afar off? Because they were being what? Alienated from the covenant. Alienated unto Christ. But Christ took northern, southern and northern kingdom both in his hand and brought us to the Father. That's why he sacrificed himself to give us a second chance. Okay? Um, let's go back into the book of Ephesians 2 verse 17 real quick. All right. So we're going over the peace offerings that was offered by... Um, the Levitical priesthood, all right, and how Christ took that over as well. Go ahead. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And came and preached peace to you, which were afar off. Which were afar off. Which were afar off. And Go ahead. To, and to them that were not. Who was the them that was not? Officer Kasha. The those that were not were the, uh, the Israelites that were there in the region of Jerusalem and Israel. Okay, mainly what kingdom? Southern kingdom. Mainly southern kingdom. Okay, let's go to um, let's go to Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one, verse 
Colossians chapter 1. And I want verse 20 to 23. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. He brought peace between us and the Most High because of that breach that we read about earlier, which separated us from the love of the Most High. Go ahead. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. Mm -hmm. By him. See, now these are words that in Christianity they overlook. Reconcile. To bring back. It's talking about what to bring back of old. Okay? That same agreement that the Israelites had with the Most High. All right? Only the whole world cannot reconcile back to the Most High. Go ahead. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, mm -hmm. and you, that we sometime alienated and, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, mm -hmm. yet now hath he reconciled. Because he took away those wicked works, which he's given us a chance to repent from. Go ahead. In the body of his flesh mm -hmm. through death mm -hmm. to present you holy and unblameable and unremovable. In unreprovable. His, excuse Reprovable. And unreprovable. Read it again. Read it again. In the body of his flesh through death mm -hmm. to present. Because he presented his body as a living sacrifice for us. That's why it says in the body of his flesh through death. Go ahead. To present you holy mm -hmm. and unblameable mm -hmm. and reprovable in Un, his, and unre unreprovable in his sight. And unreprovable in his sight. Next verse. If ye continue. If. Two letter word, right? Big meaning. If. 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 Go ahead. Ye continue in the faith grounded and settled. Until you die or until he comes back. You have to continue in the faith grounded and settled in him. When it means grounded and settled, meaning your foundation got to be Christ. Your foundation cannot be man. Your foundation cannot be family. Your foundation must be Christ. Go ahead. And be not moved away mm -hmm. from the hope of the gospel. Don't. That's why Paul said, what did Paul say? He said, don't. Um, what did he say again? I might I might misquote it. Don't let anything separate you from the love of Christ. Right. Famine, pestilence, affliction, tribulation. It's the same thing. You got to keep that hope and faith in Christ. It says the hope of the it says um and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Go ahead. Which ye have heard mm -hmm. and which was preached to every creature uh -huh. which is under heaven. Come on. Whereof I Paul am made a minister. And Paul was a minister. Paul was a minister to who? Circumcision or uncircumcision? Which is which is another word for who? Northern kingdom. Uncircumcision is going into the northern kingdom of Israel. Y'all understand that? Okay. Now get me Leviticus 6, 1 through 7. Christ was also, also took place for our trespass offering. Go ahead. Leviticus, Leviticus 6, 1 through 7. Chapter 6, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, if a soul sin mm -hmm. and commit a trespass against the Lord mm -hmm. and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep mm -hmm. or in fellowship or well, that's in it. That's all I want. I just wanted that first part where it says um, trespass. If a soul sin and commit trespass against the Lord. And uh, that's all I want. Okay. Jump to verse. Um, jump to verse six. Verse six. And he shall bring his trespass offering mm -hmm. unto the Lord. A ram without blemish mm -hmm. out of the flock mm -hmm. with the estimation for a trespass offering onto the priest. Now go to Romans, the third chapter. Well, Romans chapter three, verse 25. So what are we dealing with? Trespass offering for sin, whether it was willful or unwillful. Go ahead. Romans chapter three, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith. In his blood mm -hmm. to declare his righteousness mm -hmm. for the remission of sin. For the remission of sin. And what is what is the remission of sin? What does the word remission mean? If something is remitted unto you, what does that mean? Forgiven. Okay, that's why he had to lay his body down. His, his blood had to be spilled and so forth. Read that again. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation. 
through faith in his blood mm -hmm. to declare his righteousness for the remission of sin mm -hmm. that are past. That are past. That's why the Bible says what? What does Christ says? Once we repent, we're a new, new, new creature in Christ. OK, so it says. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Go ahead. Through the forbearance of God. Read on. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, mm -hmm. that he might be just mm -hmm. and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Give me Acts chapter 13, verse 39. Acts chapter 13, verse 39. Acts chapter 13 and verse 39. And by him, all that believe are justified. And now when it says all that believe, brothers, it's only talking about the nation of Israel. I know some of y'all still got Christianity on the brain. It's only talking about the nation of Israel. Go ahead. And by him, all that believe are mm -hmm. justified from all things, mm -hmm. which from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Explain that part. Malchijah. What is, what is that talking about where it says, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses? It's talking what about was something, what, what it's, is that going into? Uh, it's talking about different things that you, uh, different sins uh, in the Old Testament that you couldn't get forgiven for, it's like uh, murder, you get put to death for that, uh, adultery. Very good. Very good. Good, good. I want to make sure y'all paying attention. All right. So it says, from which you could not be justified. By the law of Moses. Now give me Acts 3.19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore mm -hmm. and be converted. So once we repent and we're converted, go ahead. That your sins may be blotted out. That's the purpose of Jesus Christ, right? Blotting out our sins. Once we repent and we're converted. Go ahead. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now get me the article. Okay. More proof, brothers and sisters, more proof that um, Christ took over the sacrificial laws. Christ took over the priesthood. Okay. Let's see what was the protocol of the priesthood when it dealt, when they dealt with the sacrifice of the lamb. This is from an article called The Mirror. Go ahead. Every for every firstborn male lamb was considered holy and was set aside for sacrifice in Jerusalem. Sacrifice where? In Jerusalem. Sacrifice in Jerusalem. Where was where was Jesus Christ sacrificed? Sacrificed? You guys are sure? Jerusalem? Okay, go ahead. You guys are correct. Go ahead. Sheep herding was a hereditary occupation. Hereditary. Hereditary occupation. Uh-huh. And generations of sheep herds. Shepherds. Shepherds. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Can you see this? Yes. Come on. Were trained to care for these special lambs. Mm -hmm. They literally literally risk their lives to protect the sheep from predators mm -hmm. and keep them from falling into many crevices and ravines in the rocky in that rocky hill country. Go ahead. The so Jerusalem was a rocky hill country, right? Hence earlier what we talked about. With the um, cavalry and Golgotha, that mountain, it was a hill, all right? The mountain of skulls, I think they referred to it. Go ahead. The newborn lambs would be wrapped tightly, swaddled. The newborn lambs that would that would have to be brought to where? To Jerusalem would be what? Wrapped what? They would be wrapped tightly. Go ahead. Swaddled. Swaddled. In, this, in specially des design designated temp temple cloths. And they would be laid in a manger to keep them contained while they were being examined for blemishes. Mm, right. Who does this remind us of? Christ. But you got to ask yourself, where did they come from? Because they said they were brought to Jerusalem. We're going to get into that soon. Go ahead. At the time, at the appointed time, the shepherds would separate the land, mm -hmm. selecting only the first boat. Firstborn males uh -huh. that were without mark. That were without mark. Go ahead. Or blemish. Just like Jesus Christ. Remember what we read er earlier about Ezekiel and, Hose and Hosea. How the Most High would use prophets, right, as a sign to the children of Israel. It's the same thing the Most High used Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as a sign to Israel of the shadow of good things to come. 
Okay, go ahead. And they still use this today. Okay, over there, them fake Jews, the Jewish people, all right, they still practice this today. They get the lamb from um, Bethlehem and it's slaughtered in Jerusalem. The lambs are raised in Bethlehem, cultivated in Bethlehem, and then brought to Jerusalem for slaughter for the Passover. Same thing with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're going to go into the scriptures to prove that. Go ahead. And would lead them to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. where they would be purchased by people wanting to present a sacrifice before the Lord to atone for their sins. So that's what was going on in the old Leviticus times. But guess what? This is still being practiced today by the synagogue of Satan over there. OK, um, get me the prophecy on that. Get me Micah. Micah five. Let me hear that. All right. So we know now the lambs were always um, slaughtered in Jerusalem. The firstborn male with no blemishes, they were put in, in swaddled clothes. They actually put clothes on the lamb. OK, because that was the lamb that was going to be um, slaughtered. OK. Give me uh, Micah and verse two. Micah, chapter five, verse two. The book of Micah, chapter five and verse two. Mm -hmm. But thou, Bethlehem, Eph Ephrath. Tha, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, mm -hmm. yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. Mm -hmm. That is to be be ruler in Israel. Mm -hmm. That's whose, to be ruler in Israel. Come on. Whose goings forth have been from of old from everlasting. That it? Whose goings forth have been from old, from of old, from everlasting. But notice what it says. It says, but thou Bethlehem, Ephrathah. Okay, now go to the book of John, chapter 7, verse 42. Let me hear 41. John, chapter 7, verse 42. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 42. Mm -hmm. Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David mm -hmm. and out of the town of Bethlehem? And out of the town of Bethlehem. Come on. Where David was the same thing in the article we read, the lamb came from Bethlehem and was slaughtered in Jerusalem, just like Jesus the Christ. Read. So there was a division among the people because of him. And there was a division amongst the people because of him. Now, get me Matthew chapter two, verse one. Further proof. The book of Matthew, chapter two and verse one. Mm -hmm. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Read that again. I'm sorry. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the, the king, mm -hmm. behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. So there's more proof right there. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. And then later on, he was slaughtered in Jerusalem. Now, get me uh, the book of John where it says the truth, the way and the life. All right. So you got to be a fool in the year 2021, according to Esau, to not believe in Jesus Christ. OK, that's for the Old Testament um, Israelites out there and those who reject Christ as the Lord and Savior. You have to be a fool. There is no other mediator on this planet Earth but him. And he's the only way to the father. Go ahead. I think it's John. Who knows it? John. Is it John 14? 14 and 6. Come on. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto him. Mm -hmm. Jesus I, saith unto him. Come on. I am the way. I am the what? The way. He is the way. Go ahead. The truth. Uh-huh. And the life. Read. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we must, we must believe in him and go through him in order to get to the Father. That's it. Y'all brothers understand? All right. All praises. We'll all shut praise. it down on that. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold, 
from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.